as a preview to uh, looking into graceful termination is we'll try to uh, make logging across different fibers a bit more meaningful. What we'd like to do is we'd like to define in our library a some sort of diagnostic logger. And then we'd like to make it so that we can import such logger. And then we can define one here and say logger equals logger dot, sorry, diagnostic. new and we can just give it a name so that we'll know again because we're we're logging across different fibers it's important that we know first of all which class or which file is actually uh, generating the logs but also we'll see how we can keep track of which fiber in particular is um, responsible for running that particular log line so we we'd like to define logger as uh, as such so we can now go back and just make this happen so I'll define it diagnostic logger. We're just gonna take a lot from the existing logger from uh, from uh, Crystal. We're just gonna make it a bit simpler for our so for us. And in particular, what we like to do is we'd like to include fiber names in our um, in our log. And also we'll see how we can make make it very simple for other modules to include a logger by uh, using some macro magic. So to start, let's make sure we pass a name. We have to pass a name to our logger so that we know which component is logging what. And this is just gonna be, if we go and look at how crystal loggers are defined, which we can do in a second here. So if I go for logger, um, I'm defining, I'm, I'm subclassing logger rather than just defining a formatter because we want to have a bit more of a fine grained uh, control. And we just want to use some convention to make it a bit simpler for our users to rely on the, on this logger, uh, diagnostic logger. So the first thing uh, I wanted to do is I wanted to set, and sometimes, you know, the source code is the thing that helps the most. So let's look at what logger CR looks like. And we can look at what initialization actually does. And you can see there's a, there's a variable called prog name. We're just gonna make sure that prog name is set to the name of uh, of the component. And we're also gonna make sure that we call super with file. And again, this is where the convention comes, open uh, log, log txt, that's one name, uh, one possible name. Uh, I'm doing this because the initializer for logger expects a an IO object, file.open is an IO object. And if you look at the code or the doc documentation, you'll notice that uh, logger will take care of closing the IO resource whenever the diagnostic, sorry, whenever the logger uh, shuts down itself. Um, so we define, we call super so that everything is uh, uh, initialized as uh, it should. And then we define prog name as the name passed in the initialize method. And let's verify if we need to do something else. Yes, we also need to define a custom formatter for our uh, for our logger otherwise uh, there's not much point in doing what we're doing and the way we can do that this is just by overriding the uh, just by defining the uh, instance variable formatter and this is gonna be something like you can see that there's quite a lot of code around the severity we can probably just 
skip that. There's also a bit of duplication in what's being printed. We can just focus on the date time. And then we're gonna print, rather than the process PD, we can print the fiber name. And if you call fiber.current.name, that's what you're gonna get. I'm not too interested in processes right now because most of what we're doing is, happens in the same, actually everything we're doing right now happens in the same process. So that would be a bit of a redundant piece of information. And the other thing we wanted to print, of course, is the prog name, but let's ju just make sure we print it in a, uh, in a nice way. So we can do prog name first, then maybe just improvising a bit here and then uh, colon and then maybe an arrow. Let's see what this looks like. And we don't need this. We need the date time. Uh, another thing that we might want to do is to make the date time a bit nicer. And everything else we probably don't need. So we're gonna do label, which is actually just the the level or severity as it's passed in passed in. And then and this we can put in square brackets why not and then what else the message obviously um, which is here so we can just go message also let me just put the severity before everything else so we go severity then we go prog name which is the component that is logging so the place where the log has been initialized then the current file, the, the current name, the, sorry, the name of the current fiber if it's there. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to be an empty string be, uh, in case it's nil. And then the most important part, really, uh, the message itself. And we should be good. Uh, last thing I wanted to do is to make the date time a bit nicer. I'm going to go and look at the documentation because I can never remember what that looks like for date time. So if you have a time, There we go. Not this sort of time, but just time. Then we can call to string with a bunch of, uh, with a formatting uh, string, which is very, very convenient. So we know what day it is, so we don't need that bit of information. So I'm just gonna focus on hour, minute, and second to make the message a bit less bloated. And I think I'm, I definitely missed a bunch of uh, spaces, I'm sure, but you know what? Let's give this a go. So going back to the URL generator, we just now need to, sorry, to the URL checker. We now need to actually try our logger. So what we can do inside every is we can log at info level, something like sending URLs. Got a tiny uh, terminal on the bottom left uh, side of the screen, I think, unless everything is mirrored. So what I can do is I can just um, tail dash f on log.txt, uh, which of course for now doesn't exist. But if I just run this application, and assuming we have no compilation errors, which we'll see in a second. We should be able to look at the logs at, as they get generated. Compilation seems all right. While we wait, I can do some cleanup on the on the browser. Still waiting for the application to start. There we go. Error opening uh, file log txt. Well, that was quite expected, right? So if we go back to the logging to the diagnostic logger file, you can see that we're opening this file log txt, but we're opening it with the default um, with the default 
flag, which is in read-only mode. So we just want to make sure we open it in write mode and having the W uh, here just makes it so. So if I go back to the to our URL checker and run again, in the meantime, again, for the cleanup part, I'm just going to remove URL generator because we're not using that anymore. So to recap, we now have a nice way, hopefully, to uh, log information. So if I go tail dash F, okay, that's not too bad. So we can see we're logging a, at a particular time with a particular severity from a particular component, which is main. And we're just saying sending URLs. Let's make this a bit more exciting. So I'm going to stop the application from running. and try and log something from another module. So what I'll do is inside diagnostic logger for just, just for my convenience, I'm going to define a module and I'm going to call it logging. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this. So what I'd like to be able to do is from a particular task, for example, the stats logger, why not? I'd like to be able to say module stats logger, extend logging. And I'd like to just have a logger available from now on so that if inside the loop or actually at the beginning of the, at the stats logger startup time, I want to just logger.info starting. Um, and just, and I can also give a name to this, uh, to the stats logger just to see if, uh, if that works right I, i'd like to be able to do this now of course if i try and run this uh, right now that's not going to work because the uh, logger is not defined inside the logging module but the way I, one one interesting way i can do this is by relying on this macro extend extended sorry and this macro extended is a very i invite you to crystal I invite you to go and read something about this uh, extended um, macro. If you go to the crystal reference uh, book, you can just look for macro and you're going to find on page on the second page, I think uh, hooks. And these are macros called at compiled time whenever for example, a module is inherited or extended. And that's exactly what we want. If you look at this, what we're doing is we're saying macro inherited, and then we are basically adding methods to whoever inherits from the parent class. Again, I invite you to go, come and, and read the documentation to get a bit more information. And for now, I'm just gonna define a logger method on, uh, method on on self otherwise we're not going to be resolving it right and what logger is going to do is it's going to rely on a on a module level variable that's what the double at uh, takes care of and it's just going to define logger as uh, either return logger or just call diagnostic and uh, diagnostic logger dot new and then so we'd like to give a particular name to this uh, to this component uh, so to this uh, to this logger because it's logging from inside the module that inherited well sorry that extended um, logging. Turns out that's a there's a very convenient way of doing this with macro, which is just referencing at type, and this at compile time is going to resolve to the name of the module extending um, uh, logging, and so I just stringify this. And that's going to be it. And now if I go back to stats logger, you can see I'm extending logging. I get, because we're in a self, um, in, a, in a method defined on self, we're going to have straight direct access to logger. And we also expect to get the logger initialized with stats logger as the name of the component. 
So let's try and see if that's the case. And keep an eye on the logging uh, on the tail. Let's see what happens. And again, keep an eye on the logger. There we go. Only we're only logging one thing. And we can see that at 747.22 we we log stats logger, stats logger starting. You can also see that there's a bit of a broken log on the second line. That's not completely unexpected. If you look at the implementation of log of uh, of logger right now in crystal the implementation is not thread safe across different instances of the um of the of, of the of the class logger so it's not completely crazy that we're getting some broken logs mm. so that's good so as you can see that's some uh, i know there's a lot of magic involved here but actually that's a very convenient way of um automatically defining methods on a class or a module whenever a parent class or a module is extended or included or inherited inside the module or class so very convenient so just to recap whenever someone calls logger inside a method inside a, a module that extended extended logging we're gonna have the same instance returned of diagnostic uh, logger with a particular um, with a particular component name, which is pretty great. So that's it. So we looked into um, handling configuration a bit better. We looked into what sensible monkey patching uh, looks like when we have types on our side and we can use um, method signatures to be very precise in what we are, uh, how we are extending in, uh, core, met, uh, core modules and classes. And now we looked at how we can customize the uh, logger formatter to include some fiber information and also how we can define uh, very, very simple uh, modules that uh, extend the capability of, uh, of other modules by making methods available uh, in the scope of the, of the self of the module.